This video series will show you from scratch how to build a front-end web page using the latest React framework. We are starting from the very beginning, so all you need to know is a bit of HTML and JavaScript. Well, at least understand it. My goal here is to keep things simple but powerful, so I'll show you the tricks I use to avoid using external tools like Redux or Flux. If you already know a bit of React, I just want to say that we'll be using hooks for our components, not the complicated class-based stuff. Hi, I am Smok, a senior software developer. I started like most of you, from console programs and desktop apps, and a bit later I spent a lot of time developing websites, back when PHP was a king, and no peril could say otherwise. So what's changed since then? Backend and frontend were more intertwined. You would put backend PHP code between frontend and HTML tags, and every time you would visit the website, the server would actually run that code to generate a web page on the fly and send it to you. Everything was in a single place, frontend and backend, so you could say it was a bit simpler to build, but at the same time it was hard to maintain and extend later. React will allow you to prepare front-end HTML and JavaScript files that will be loaded by browser as static assets and cached. These files will tell the browser where backend API endpoints are when and how to talk to them and how to display information retrieved from API. Such split allows to have separate servers for static assets and multiple backend services. Keeping everything on a single host is fine, until your user count grows. Eventually you won't be able to find a machine powerful enough to serve them all. So what is my use case? Well, I needed a simple CRUD web app to showcase character cards for an online Discord server. People used to put descriptions of their RPG characters in a separate Discord room, which is a bit of a hassle to navigate. So this is the idea, a CRUD website. Create, read, update and delete. Alright, so what are the key features of this project? What are we trying to build? So basically they want to list edit their cards, upload images, crop them, and perhaps use some sort of markup for formatting of the description of this character. All of that requires some sort of backend API, backed with database and session management. I won't focus on that very much, I will just touch on bits and pieces that we really need to go over. It goes without saying that you will need to know a little bit of HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript to build apps for browsers. This isn't very important for this course, but it will help you a lot. You will need a trusty text editor, preferably one with good support for JSX, which is React's JavaScript flavor. I'm going to use Atom with a few plugins listed in the description, so check it out. Also, we will need NPM or Node Package Manager. It will help with setting up projects and adding dependencies. We'll also need a terminal application or a console to use NPM on our system. Don't worry, we'll use only a few simple commands. To standardize the experience across different systems, I'll be using Git for Windows or so-called Git Bash. So go ahead and install these on your machine. I'll wait. Okay, ready to move on? Open your terminal and navigate to the directory you would like to designate for your project. With Git Bash, you can just right click in the explorer and Git Bash here. I'm going to go ahead and create a directory for this project right now. Boom. And there we are. Execute the following commands to set up a simple scaffolding app that will have basic packages. npx create react app. And now we get to name our app. 
I'm going to call my app my app. Happy hacking. Great. So let's go to that directory and now execute npm start. You can see that a browser is opened and our app is built and presented in the window. This is because Create React App is a package that depends on another package called Webpack. Webpack provides local web server for development purposes. This is why you can see localhost uh, 3000 uh, in your URL. So now let's see what files are generated by Create React App. Node modules. As you can see, there is a lot of folders or directories in there. NPM stores their packages we install and all of their subsequent dependencies. Then we have public. All the static assets we add to our websites, images, HTML files, favicons, robots file, and such. Finally, source or the actual app sources, JavaScript and CSS files. Root directory contains few config files for Git, tests, linting, and for NPM. More advanced users will edit package.json file, which contains all the configuration for Node, um, to install and update dependencies. Now, it's important to realize that none of these files should go directly on your actual web server to be used in production by end users. They are files for developer use only. Webpack, I've mentioned before, is actually a tool that takes all the files from your app and packs them into a bundle, which is then minified compiled version of your app. Let's try it. Stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and execute this command, npm run build. Let's go back to Atom. You can see that new directory appeared in File Explorer build. It contains the version that is ready to be stored on the web server for your users to see. All files from public directory are copied over and source from source directory was compiled and minified in here in the static directory over here, right? So this is what we are going to see. As you might guess, minification is a process that removes white space and replaces long symbols, function names, variables, constants, and such with meaningless letters like these ones. So your browser can fetch it quickly from the internet. Webpack will bundle all the external dependencies if needed and make sure that your React code can be compiled to valid JavaScript. But it won't guarantee that all JavaScript you wrote will be working correctly. So you'll get some guarantees, but not all. Professional developers write automated tests to check if behavior they intended to have stays the same over the years of changes. There are different kinds of tests, unit tests, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, and so on, but I won't cover them here for brevity. So I'm going to start a GitHub repo so we can follow this course closely. Check the description for a link. That's enough for now. I will see you in the next video where we'll talk about React JSX, components, and props. Subscribe so you won't miss it.